In addition to the four gas laws we learned in other lessons, there are four additional gas laws that we're going to learn in this section. The first is called Gay-Lussac's Law of Combining Volumes. This is the same Gay-Lussac that proposed the directly proportional relationship between pressure and temperature. With his law of combining volumes, he predicted that reactants and products in gas reactions can be expressed in simple whole number ratios. So for example, if I take three cubic meters of hydrogen and I combine that with one cubic meter of nitrogen, I will be able to produce two cubic meters of ammonia. And it didn't matter what units of volume that he used, the amounts of reactants and products were always able to be expressed in simple whole number ratios. Shortly after Gay-Lussac proposed his second gas law, Avogadro realized that some of Gay-Lussac's observations could not be explained using Dalton's atomic theory. The first flaw that he found was, according to John Dalton, all gases existed as monatomic atoms. For example, hydrogen gas was simply an H, and oxygen gas was simply an O. Dalton also proposed that one molecule of one gas plus another molecule of another gas would always make one molecule of the product. But Avogadro realized that these two explanations could not explain Gay-Lussac's observations. For example, Gay-Lussac observed that two volumes of hydrogen plus one volume of oxygen always produced two volumes of water vapor, which was different than Dalton's atomic theory proposed. So Avogadro proposed that elements could be diatomic rather than monatomic. And using this reasoning, if hydrogen is a diatomic gas and oxygen is a diatomic gas, then that would explain why Gay-Lussac observed two units of hydrogen plus one unit of oxygen producing two units of water vapor. In 1811, Avogadro proposed that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain equal numbers of molecules. This number of molecules is what we now know as Avogadro's number, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. What this law essentially means is that the volume is directly proportional to the number of molecules. As you can see in the graph, as the amount of molecules goes up, the volume also increases. This produces a diagonal line in my graph, which is characteristic of directly proportional relationships. This relationship between molecules and volume allows us to create a concept called molar volume, where one mole of any gas will occupy the same volume as one mole of any other gas. It doesn't matter what the gas identity is. It could be helium or oxygen or water vapor. But at standard temperature and pressure, the standard molar volume is always equal to 22.4 liters, regardless of the type of gas. If I were to gift wrap a basketball, I could take a basketball and put it in a box that was just slightly bigger than that basketball, and that box would be approximately 22.4 liters. Because I'm able to make this relationship between one mole of any gas and one mole of any other gas, I'm able to use molar volume to do stoichiometry. Remember your mole maps from previous chapters where we can take the mass or the particles of one substance and convert them into the mass or particles of a different substance based on the balanced equation of a chemical reaction. We can do the same thing with volumes of gas. Now notice in the mole map, on the left hand side it does say volume A, but that is for a solid or a liquid. In order to compare volumes of gas, we need to add two boxes to our mole map. These boxes represent the volume of a gas at standard temperature and pressure, or STP. Remember that standard temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, or 273 Kelvin, and standard pressure is 1 atmosphere. And from the previous slide, 1 mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure has a volume of 22.4 liters. And then we can use those simple whole number ratios that are found in the balanced chemical equation to make comparisons between volumes of gases. By combining Avogadro's law with Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Gay-Lussac's law, we come up with an equation called the ideal gas law, which is written as PV equals nRT, where the n is the number of moles of particles. This number is important because the number of molecules present will affect at least one of the other qualities. If I increase the number of moles of gas in a rigid container, the pressure inside the container is going to go up because there are more particles colliding with the sides. 
If I increase the number of moles in a flexible container like a balloon, then the volume will also increase. The R in the ideal gas law is called the gas constant. The gas constant has several different values depending on what units you use. But when we use the ideal gas law, the most common value to use is 0.0821. Because the ideal gas law does not require the conditions to be at standard temperature and pressure, we can also use the ideal gas law to establish relationships between moles. So if we revisit the mole map that we just added to, where the volume of gases at STP is at the bottom, we can add two more boxes for the volume of a gas when it's not at STP. And so when the conditions of the system are not at standard temperature and pressure, we can use the ideal gas law to solve for the number of moles, which is represented by the letter N in the equation. I will demonstrate several of these ideal gas calculations and stoichiometry problems in class. The last law that we need to discuss is called Graham's Law of Effusion. Remember that according to the kinetic molecular theory, gases that are at the same temperature have the same kinetic energy. And if their kinetic energy is equal, then there is an inverse relationship between their mass and their velocity. If I take that equation and rearrange it, I'm able to derive a new equation, which is known as Graham's Law. Graham's Law states that the velocity of a gas is inversely proportional with the square root of its molar mass. In more simple terms, it means that molecules with a lighter mass will have to move faster than heavy molecules in order to have the same amount of kinetic energy. For example, if I had two balloons, one filled with nitrogen and one filled with helium, that had the same number of particles, and I let those balloons sit for 24 or 48 hours, you would notice that the nitrogen balloon would have gotten slightly smaller, but the helium balloon would have gotten considerably smaller. This is because the mass of helium is 4, whereas the mass of nitrogen gas is 28. Because helium has a lower molar mass, the particles move faster and therefore effuse faster through the tiny holes of the balloon. The equation for Graham's Law uses proportions where the rate of gas 1 compared to the rate of gas 2 is inversely proportional to the square root of its mass. So because there's an inverse relationship, if the rate of gas 1 is on the top, the molar mass of gas 1 is on the bottom of the other side of the equation. I will also demonstrate some of these calculations in class as well.